right, welcome everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of LifeCast. I'm very excited to be here back at Level 3 Fitness again. It's another member of my Level 3 Fitness family, Mrs. Sarah Arvis. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. It's awesome to be back um, and shoot with number, another one of my team members. So we're going to kind of get into it. Um, the theme of these last couple of weeks, we're talking about nourishment. Uh, and we know that that delves into nutrition, but also a number of other, uh, of other things to nourish the body, mind, and soul. And Sarah is great, great at that. Um, she has some great perspectives that I want to let her tell you all about. So uh, without further ado, we're going to talk to Sarah. Sarah, welcome. Yes. And give us a little bit of your story and your background. Go from there. Um, okay, so I'm really passionate about nutrition, as you know, like crazy passionate about it and about uh, fitness and wellness and uh, energy and, and everything like that. Um, I think for me, it all started when I was a kid and I was um, fat and I had red hair, freckles, I wore glasses. The only thing I didn't have was braces, but I was obese and, um, and kids made fun of me in the, in the playground. And um, so, um, and then one day I uh, walked in and a cousin of mine said, suck your gut in and I was 10 years old and I never forgot that that was the pivotal moment and from that moment on I was like what should I be eating what should I be doing I was 10 years old and I had this you know really imposed on me it was like you know with disdain suck your gut in like you're disgusting right and that's when that started so that I, t I went to my mother and I said I, I need to do something about this I'm so unhappy and so that awareness around my my body okay. started the, really then. How did your mother react when, when, when you came to her as a child with, with that? She was fabulous. She 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 just said, okay, okay, well, well, let's let's see what kind of choices we can make. And and she didn't have. I mean, this is this is going way back. And you know, there wasn't a lot on nutrition then. But she was wonderful at cooking home cooked meals. So we didn't eat out a lot. So we were eating nourishing food and she, there was always a salad on the table. There was always a homemade soup and okay. veggies. So that's, you know, so she just said stuff like, well, instead of having chocolate milk at lunch, why don't you do, and I hate to say this, okay, skim milk. But that was the thing back then. It was, you right. know, the, the non-fat or the low fat. So, so I had skim milk instead of chocolate milk. I had, which now I know is really not that good, you know, obviously. Right. But, um, and I would have, or instead of orange juice, I would have water. There you go. And instead of a cookie, I would have an apple. So my mother really introduced me to proper nutrition. Got you. How do you feel, the, the, so when, when you were talking about that, the difference of like accessibility to like knowing what is proper nutrition and, and what is not proper nutrition. You're a little bit older than I am. And so, you know, in my era, or these era now, there's, there's online, there's all kinds of like ways that we can learn about nutrition. And I feel like in talking with say my parents, they didn't have a lot of resources to know about nutrition, not like some of the parents may have today. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about what just what that was like going through like that process of, of learning of, um, you know, I don't know, just, just, that, just that whole process. Do you notice a difference, I guess? So I think when I was a kid, um, you know, growing up, I think that it was um, some, some magic happened, which was we used to have, like, I think here they, in America, I grew up in Canada and Toronto, and I think they called it, here they call it the president's test or something for how, how fit you are. Oh, yeah, the Arnold Schwarzenegger was yeah, involved with that at some point. All, so we had the same type of thing in Canada, and you would get either a bronze medal, a silver medal, or a gold medal for your fitness level. And I couldn't get a medal because I was overweight and I couldn't, I couldn't run well. I couldn't do the, the sit-ups. Like they had that you doing these ridiculous things. How many sit-ups can you do in 60 seconds and all this stuff. So after my cousin told me, suck it in, I started getting very serious about that um, award. I was gonna at least get a bronze medal and that was gonna be my thing. Anyway, so I, pr I practiced. So n the nutrition was, just in the background at that point my mother was helping me make good choices right so i was doing the nutrition just because my mom would put fruit in front of me instead of cake or, right. or cookies and so that was coming along and then and then i started working out i started doing like mom watch this and i would i would do like five push five um, crunches and i'd be like look at that and she'd say that's fantastic and 
and my dad would be there cheering me on. And then we were a very active family. We were we were a tennis family. Okay. So so my dad would say, "Come on, get out on the court." And I so I started loving exercising. So I went from watching TV, watching you know, I'm going to give you my era now, watching like Bewitched and stuff like that, yeah. you know, and Flintstones and Scooby Doo to getting out on the tennis court or going swimming Love or it. whatever. And then didn't you at some point get into martial arts? I did. To t talk about how, how that came into your life. So my, my brothers were taking martial arts. I, they're much older than I am. I was, I was little um, and I remember this really exotic man coming in a, what, I didn't know what it was at the time, but in his gi with his black belt, it was all almost white because it was so, he had had it for you know for right. like 50 years right and he came in and he would he would teach my brothers karate and I said I'm going to do that when I'm older I made up my mind I'm going to be I'm going to be able to do this and then um, when I was 26 I took my I went I found the same instructor uh -huh. he wasn't as old as I thought he was because <laughs> <laughs> when you're little right. someone who's 40 looks like you know oh, absolutely. like an old man so yeah. I, I went to him and he said, yes, I remember your family, and I remember, and so he, he, uh, he helped me, and um, I started my, my karate there, and, um, and it, was, it was fantastic. It was the beginning of, of 15 years of really hardcore martial arts. I couldn't get enough of it. So really? then the fitness was really amped up, and it was every day. I had to train every single day. What, what, what is training for martial arts, especially if I remember you got to a pretty competitive level, right? I did. So what's training for martial arts at that level? What does some of that entail? So I was training um, uh, every single day, usually, uh, when I started I was going once a day every single day, and then I moved to Los Angeles and I went three times a day. Wow. So I was going to the morning class, I was going to the lunchtime class, and the evening class. Okay. And I was training with um, some amazing instructors and with a huge lineage. I was training with, I don't know if anybody out there knows Nishiyama Sensei. I was training with Nishiyama Sensei and Abi Rokach when I was living in um, California. Did you in some LA. of the top names in the karate game? Yes, okay. yes. And I also trained here and I was always trying to go to two classes a day. I would go to try to go to lunchtime and um, dinner time. And of course, after I had children that changed, but I was always, and then I was part of the Mountain States team that went to nationals. So, um, we, you know, we were we were doing Sunday team practices. We're, you know, thank God my husband was like, you go girl. He was really supportive and um, wonderful and my kids were cool and. Let's take a sh time to shout out Jack, right? Yes, yay Jack. <laughs> yay Jack. Awesome, awesome. Yay Jack and um, yay, yay my instructor here, Sensei Yaguchi, amazing, amazing man. And, um, and then Toronto Sensei was Sensei Soroka who has since passed away. Okay. And, and just how high did you kind of get in, in your competition level? So I, I was competing at nationals and um, we, uh, we came in, uh, I was part of the team, Kata team, and we came in third in okay. U.S. nationals. Nice. And, um, and I went to nationals for several years, but one, one year when I thought I was going to have my best year because mm -hmm. I was in the best shape of my life, I broke my big toe a month before nationals and um, in like three places oh. and it was so hard. I still won two rounds, but I couldn't make it into, I couldn't, I couldn't continue on right. because the pain, I oh. couldn't, the, the mental, I know that there's people who compete with broken limbs. I just couldn't do the kata with a well, broken, big broken toe that was still. And well now, I think you and I too know now the, how important the big toe is. It, Oh, in life, in every, <laughs> every literally, like it is so oh incredibly God. important to yes. life in general. So it's, it's kind of a full Foot health. moment, right? My gosh, you like you never realize it until you don't have it. Oh yeah, then... for sure. You know what? What's interesting? I've just recently, within the last few months, gotten into martial arts. Yes. Um, you know, I got yes. into Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and it's been one of the best things. And what I love about it is. A to be, you know, to be out there and, and competitive, not even at a super high level, but just with, you know, your your peers or whatever. I've noticed that I have to do a little bit different stuff in my life. I have to make sure that I am getting good nutrients to be strong to go yes. to go against these guys. You know, um, I have to make sure I'm getting good sleep. Yes. Um, you know, and so I'm finding that I really have to focus on nourishing my body, mind, and soul to be part of jujitsu, and yes. it's kind of been this really nice circle of like. Man, I feel so good doing this. I know I need to keep 
doing all, all of these things. Together. And so I just think the martial arts is a great vehicle yeah. for um, a lot of people to, you know, kind of get, get, get that uh, idea of being healthy and competing and, mm -hmm. um, and the also, exercise. Don't, and don't you find that when you do martial arts, it is so all consuming that everything else, every, all the noise in your life disappears. It's crazy how quiet it is amongst the chaos, right? Yes, and then all you're doing is focusing on that task, whatever yep. that task is in the moment. Oh yeah. And it is just transformative because, and transcendent. Oh, unbelievable. You transcend because you are absolutely zeroed in and living in the moment, which is really what life should be about, you have which to is be. being in the moment. And we're so distracted and we're going here and we're going there and we're thinking about what we're going to make for dinner and that we have to go do this and make this phone call. And really being present and being in the moment is right. really what it's about. And martial arts really helped me zero in on that and experience it. it. You almost get into like a, when you're really into it, it's almost meditative or something in, in, in the sense that you are able amongst this, it's because it's chaos when you think about it, but you're able to be slow and still in it when you start to get at the higher levels. And that's one thing in jujitsu they, they teach you, especially because we're grappling, so we're on the ground a lot. So you're at the bottom underneath yes. people, right? And that's claustrophobic. And one of the biggest things they teach you is like, if you're down there against a big guy who's been doing this for years, you probably aren't gonna have a ton of success getting out, work on being calm and breathing down there. Yes. And I found that such a great metaphor for life because life will knock you on your ass. It'll be a big black belt laying on you sometimes, right? And it's like, Sometimes all you can do is find a way to breathe and be calm, yes. you know, and find your breath and then figure out how can I get out of, out of this tough position. And if that's submitting, getting up to get back on the mat for the next round, then that's such life too, you know? And so I find a lot of parallels of being in an adverse situation like combat um, and then where you can take that to real life, like life's gonna try to punch you and kick you and it's yes. gonna do it and having all the time. Quiet, like you, what you're saying is so true, It when the big, 250 pound guy is lying on top of you and you don't are not going to have the strength you have to have such calmness and it's in the calm that you can actually be a creative thinker it's yep. in the present moment if you're thinking in the past or you're thinking about the future you are tethered yep. you are held up and locked down by those cords of e those energetic cords are tugging on you, so whether much. you're past or future. But if you're in the present moment and you're breathing and you're calm, that's when your real, true creative mind can come out. A hundred percent. You know what? I yesterday I had a really great kind of real life experience. Um, I had uh, uh, kind of a rough little emotional couple hours yesterday, um, and something I saw something and it really hit me and was bothering me and. So I called up or I text one of my friends, one of my jujitsu friends, and was like, you wanna meet me at the mats? And we went for about 45 minutes of just hardcore, so much fun. But when I left, like... Purged. 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 And I was so in that moment of just trying to, and this guy whoops my butt all the time. He's yeah. bigger, faster, stronger, younger, more experienced. But I love that. And it was such when I got done, I was like, whatever that worry was, it, like this brought me so centered yes. and so much in the moment. And then I was having so much fun. You know, and I think that's a really important part is to have fun with, with it. Totally. And if, can we get back to yeah. the nutrition? Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say, let's segue back to, to some of this because, stuff. Talk to me. So I remember I was competing at a very high level in karate, and I remember that one of the t high instructors, um, I was a black belt, and I was competing at nationals, and this was a few days before nationals, and he came up to me and he said, you're not eating enough protein. He had, we'd, gone, we'd all gone out to dinner, and he watched me eat, and he said, you're too thin, you're not eating enough. And, and weight gain now is my is my problem. Right. I can't gain enough. You're one of the few and that's, and that's kind trying. of, you know, going the other way. Yeah, They're so for that. I need to put it on. But so he was saying, you're not eating enough protein. He could tell just by the way when you punch, you know, when you have when you have that moment of, of, of everything um, tightening at the same time, yeah. at least in the style that I did. Right. I mean, I wasn't well, doing a Chinese style, a flowing style. I was doing a hard style. Right. And we needed what we call, you know, kine. We needed that focus. And I was having a little trouble achieving that because I was training so hard and not getting enough protein. I probably wasn't even getting enough carbs or fats, but not enough food. Period. Just enough fuel. Enough fuel. So fuel, and also you, you, if you don't get enough fuel, you get brain fog. And then how do you, you know, when you're grappling or when you're sparring, it's strategic. It's oh, meant. It's a it's mental so workout. Chess. It's a so chess. much chess game. It's a chess That's game. That's why you have to slow it down to get good at it, or you know, and breathe. And yes. the breath work allows you 
to find your opening to go. Yeah. <clears throat> and you don't and you don't necessarily get that if you have brain fog because exactly. you didn't eat properly uh, yep. or sleep. Yes. Or take do self care. Right. You know. Uh, all 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 of the above. Yeah. Talk. Uh, you brought up breathing. Talk to me about breathing, um, and 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 how it fits in your life and your wellness plan and your wellness philosophy and your nourishment philosophy. I, I know you're like, I'm big into breathing and some of these other things. Talk to me about breathing. So, um, um, you need it for life. Okay. <laughs> Good to so, know. I'm going to write that I'm one big, down. I'm big on breathing. Um, what can I say? I, I use it all the time. I meditate and I do uh, breath work. Um, I'm doing um, Deepak Chopra's, um, you know, breathe in for four, hold for two, exhale for six. Love. Which I love. It's great. I also um, really liked what I saw, um, what I've seen with um, the Iceman. Oh, um, Wim? And Wim, Wim yeah, I do my Wim Hop every day. You know, um, <laughs> I, I don't do that because I'm currently having... Um, you can hear I might be a little raspy, I don't know, but I'm currently having um, a little throat issue. Right. But um, breath work, I mean, it affects your central nervous system. Okay. You want to, and you want to engage your parasympathetic nervous system, you have to do the breath work. You have to. And we're often in fight or flight, which is the sympathetic nervous system. And that's how our society is, right? It's, it's just Yes, constant. frenetic, and so part of the energy work that I do is around um, the breath work, and in, in calming, the, that, so yeah. So you know, um, we all have energy. We have an energy field around us. We it's been it's been actually um, they have devices major, that can yeah. measure it. It's hundred percent science. And um, and and that that energy field, if you know, if you can, um, I feel it in my hands when I do when I do healing touch. I can feel frenetic energy. I can feel flowing energy. Okay. I can feel pins and needles energy. I feel different energies. And when I'm all like, you know, crazed about something, I can do self, you know, meditation and healing and breath work. And it's the breath work that really helps you engage the parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest, right. and just nourish your body. So right. it's very important for. I can't think straight if I'm in fight or flight. Oh yeah, I mean because then you have cortisol and everything's and, and adrenaline, and emotions, and emotions going all over the place. Right. You know, they're usually stressful emotions. Let's be real. So many people are stressed out in life about everything from the bills to the family to the whatever. I mean, right. You name it. So we're in this, um, like you said, that, that that sympathetic overdrive and then left brain overdrive too. Our right brain is just hanging out, not really being creative. It's just this logical. How do I get to this next point? To this next point. So we get into this kind of double, double thing where we're in left brain dominance, we're in sympathetic overdrive, and it just creates this stress reaction. One yeah. thing I find fascinating about breathing is the science behind it. When they're at, they can, we can actually kind of measure a lot of this stuff now, yes. and it's like we have access to parts of our body that we originally thought we had no control over, like the autonomic nervous system That's and parts correct. of those, and how yes. when you learn to breathe and to meditate and how to focus and some of these things. You literally have control over your immune system and over your nervous system and some of these yes. things that are just absolutely i mean they're they're changing science now with some of, some of this stuff it's unbelievable and i want to share with you that i spent 20 years on an antidepressant because uh, unfortunately i had a very traumatic um, for my body delivery of my son and uh, where i hemorrhaged very badly and they had to transfuse me and and e although mentally I thought I was fine, I ended up with uh, postpartum depression because I think my body was in such shock and fight or flight. So um, 20 years later, I weaned myself off of, uh, my, my son just turned 22, so I would say about 21 years later. So in the last year, I weaned myself off of two antidepressants, uh, well, a mood stabilizer and antidepressant um, that were, and I, I am not an, I am not somebody who says, don't do antidepressants. If no. you're depressed and you and and you can't function in life, you you know and 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 you cannot tell a depressed person meditate. It'll yeah. make you better. No, it doesn't work like no, that. No, it's it's something that you need to first be able to open the mind and get everything going in the right direction before you can even start thinking about going off the meditation. Yeah. In fact, while you're on the antidepressant, you should be starting to cultivate a meditation practice and uh, yoga and breathing and all those good things and healthy that, eating. That works too for, for your life and how that fits in work right. with where you are. But right? you can't do that stuff you when you're in absolute complete depression and it's this you know dark tunnel. So 
I weaned myself off because I took my meditation to a really high level and I felt like I'm ready now to try this and I weaned myself off and I'm currently not taking anything and I am just feeling so jazzed about life and so clear headed. Right. And the energy work is very helpful. It really helps because to balance your chakras, oh, yeah. I don't know if you know about chakras, but you know, a, a little bit. There's not, seven not, of them yeah, yeah, and yeah. then there's minor chakras, but to balance your chakras and to have energy flowing through you and to come from your heart center, mm -hmm. which is so important, is that feeling is very nourishing. And that for me has taken the place in, of the antidepressant. Yeah. But I had to be in a place to accept that I couldn't just be terribly depressed and go, okay, I'm going to go balance my chakras. Well, that's not going to work. Right. You yep. need to be ready for that. You, you know, we're, you know? We're, we're body, mind, soul, we're, however you kind of want to look at that, but it's like it all goes together. And to, I think the biggest thing that, that all that stood out to me was you talking about like the behavior change at the end of the day. We're trying to switch behaviors in life. That's what mm -hmm. all this, whether it's incorporating a, me uh, a meditation practice or a behavior of getting on prescriptions or off prescriptions, whatever it is, it's all behavior. One of the biggest things I love that you touched on was that it wasn't, okay, I'm stopping today and going 180 degrees, the exact opposite direction starting right now. Right. And I feel like in then you're setting up fitness for and wellness, that's far too much the, okay, I lived life up one way specifically for however long, decade, most people, by the time they'll right. come to see people like you and I, right? right. They've lived right. decades, you know, developing some of these, these things and now they think, okay, I'm gonna stop my medication, I'm gonna start exercising, I'm gonna start meditating, I'm gonna eat perfectly, I'm gonna meet, and it's like, holy, right. that is, and then you wonder why it, it, they can it's do it for four, four weeks or six weeks and the next thing you know, they're just crashed again and it's like, you have no energy you know, you have you have no will, and you just want all the stuff that makes you feel better. And those are those bad behaviors, and, or and I don't bad, like the term bad, but, but just yes, like it's not, those are the comfort foods lo, and lo, the lo, things, low low vibe behaviors, low not, vibration not, behaviors. Yep. Correct. So I think what what you're saying is you're setting yourself up for failure 100%. when you just do a 180 degree turn where you haven't done the prep work. Like I have been studying, I've been reading about energy work, I have been doing meditation. I my friend Karen. Thank you, Karen, if you're listening to this. Um, taught me how to meditate years and years ago when my kids were in grade school. Right. And I, she taught me how to even, I, use, I can do you know, a mala, using the mala, doing, uh, doing mantra. She taught me breath work, she taught me all that stuff. And then I built on that and read about it and kind of grew from there. But that was years in the making before I was ready to really make it a, a habit, right. a daily part. Because you can always dismiss something yep. that you know is good for you, and you can say in your brain, "I know, I know, I know," but until you make it a habit, yep. it's 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 just talk, you and, know. And changing habits, what changing one habit is hard. Yes. Trying to change twenty at oh, the exact yes. same time is really really hard. And yeah. one of the things I've always you know um, taught with my clients and stuff, it's like let's try one one thing this week that we're going to be a little bit better at. So we're going to take an extra walk or we're gonna incorporate more vegetable, like one thing, right? you know, instead right. of here's your brand new nutrition plan, here's your awesome exercise plan, it's five days a week, I mean, it's just like. Right, no, you're really good at that. It's like, 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 let's do one thing, like put some broccoli on your plate. Like, would you like this vegetable? Yeah, what do you like? Oh, I like broccoli. Okay, put broccoli on your plate, just try that. So try that this week, you know? even if it's just a couple times, yeah. you know what I mean, to start building these behaviors. Tell me how you approach this kind of stuff when you start working with a, a brand new client. I come in, I'm client Joe, I'm Lennon. You know, how do you how, how do you approach that with an individual? With the the, the nutrition piece, just, just just the whole the whole nourishment, the whole the whole process, because that's really what we do here as in our profession is we're teaching we're teaching exercise and nutrition and breathing and all these really great things. So just what's your kind of general process? Someone comes in, you know, and just kind of take us through a little bit of that. I think, I think the key is when someone new comes to make them feel comfortable so that it's not throwing everything at them. You need to do this and you need to do that because that takes you right back to I'm setting you up for failure right. because you can't do all those things. And even if you want to, you know, you've set up your life, you have your routine and your rhythm. So I think it's first connecting with the person mm -hmm. and letting them know that you're not a threat and that you're not expecting expecting them to do all this stuff it's it's what you said you know 
maybe sort of address one thing. And if it's, it might be a physical thing. I mean, also you have to listen to what your client is looking for. They may come in here and say, you know, this hip has been sore for weeks and I just want to feel better. What can you do for me? Right. So I think that that's important, addressing their needs in the moment. Right. And then if you see that there are other things that need to be addressed, if they trust you and they like you and they believe in you, you can slowly plant seeds. Right. And then as you plant seeds, you know, something might grow. But it's a, yeah. it's a trust thing and it's a comfort level and knowing, you know, you know, you cannot psychologize somebody until they, you know, know you and like you and trust open you and up to and you. Open up to you. Until yeah. they become a little, show more of their vulnerability than, and, you know, know that you're going to be empathetic, right. and, you know, with, with those. I, I think that that is super duper important. I love that, you know, it's about the individual too, I think, totally. right? You know, you're going to totally. have anyone walk through the door and, but you said they could have, you know, XYZ hurting dietary uh, restrictions. I mean, you you name where they are in their life, heart what, trouble, heart like trouble the, everything, the emotional trouble, just yes. anything. And so, I think it's really important when we're putting together stuff is to meet the person where they are and not yes. just this is this is the nutrition plan or this is the exercise plan. Right. No, let's develop the nutrition plan for you and the exercise plan for you and the wellness plan for you. And I think too often, and I, this is one of my biggest qualms with with um, a lot of the online stuff that's out there and why I really want to give voices to people who I know do it well is that it's too much of, of the obvious, too much of the opposite. It's this is a great workout for your full body and do your legs this and yeah. this is the exact macro meal plan and these are, and it's just like, holy, th yes. that stuff is not not realistic in my opinion. And I think that that's, that's what a lot of the bigger fitness diet industry relies on too yes. though. And you've done, look at the work you've done. I mean, I don't know, uh, people who know who've known Lennon a long time know that he came from a place where he was very overweight, mm -hmm. and you did it gradually. Like, how did you? You know, you're the perfect. You're the poster child for how to lose weight. How did you do it? What did you do? You know, at at the end of the day, the way I did it, and I don't like to say I did it the the right or the wrong way, but I just did it the healthy way, I think. I started to slowly change behavior. You know, at one point I was like, I need help. So I went into a big box gym, one of the ones we used to work at, um, and just like, I need a trainer. So it started there. Yeah. That was, I was probably 21 or 22, 38 now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where it started slowly but surely, started getting basic ed ed educated and making behavior changes. And I, I've always been like, like to be athletic and play basketball and tennis, but I got to a point where I couldn't really do it anymore because I was so right. just big and immobile and hurting. And so I started to be able to incorporate little things like that back into my life that were fun, yes. getting educated. And then one of the biggest things is I found great people. Like I found a tribe of, I've had probably three or four trainers in my life total. Um, and they, they've given me so much that that was one of the biggest reasons I got into this whole thing is like, wow, I would not be here without some awesome people. Like, yes. no joke, yes. I would be a whole different ballgame. And, and I think we all have to thank the people that got us here. Like, oh. I, like I had a lot of mentors along the way yep. that helped me find my path forward. Um, and uh, and I think it's really important. And just along the nutrition thing, yeah, yeah. because um, you know it's so important that you nourish your body. Because if you if you nourish your body, you know mm. things seem to fa fall into place. Yep. But, I just got to quote Michael Pollan because he says, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Yes. And see, that, that, that's what I was about, about to say when I work with clients, I like, so this is actually really complicated chemistry when you break it down, what's going on in your body, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Right. And one of the biggest changes I made, and I've struggled with the whole thing, like fool, I've gone up and down 20 pounds, 30 pounds through this whole 16 yeah. years you know yeah. so I can really understand the struggle is real for a lot of people even for myself when I have the most success it's super simple I eat a little bit of a meat-based protein yeah. and a lot pretty much as much fruit and vegetables as I want right. for the most part it's relatively that simple, simple yeah. you know we and you, move. and you move move more yeah. and eat real and you know what I take it back to like uh, you know how did humans what did we do coming up you know at first we ate plants because it's way easier to find than meat. Right, then to go hunting. Hunt, and, right? And, and yes, yes. slowly started discovering meat by scavenging and things like yeah. this, and then technology and weapons, right? And we right. became so 
meat-based and yeah. so less vegetable-based and it's like instead of vilifying something it's like let's go back to what we it's like we're, we're now designed to have some meat like we've evolved yeah that yeah, at this we're point omnivores. right and so that yeah. that's super legit but it's like mostly plants yeah and then some, some yeah. you know some, some meat in there protein is and good it's, and it's like if you, you know the terry walls diet i don't uh -uh. so you know there's there is definitely room for for meat in our lives yeah. and i know a lot of people who paleo people you know my good friend ryan you know ryan yep. he's ryan Humphreys. You know, shout out love ryan shout out we love existence ryan. athletics um, right yes, yeah 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 so i'm a tag of this now <laughs> <laughs> so you know and and you know if you listen to chris cresser um talk about um you know the paleo diet and everything like that but then there are other people out there who have other opinions but Essentially, we, you know, it's it's get away from processed foods yeah, eat and, real food. and eat real food, f food that you can recognize, you know, what it is. And, and there's another pollen thing. He said, yeah. you know, if it came from a plant, eat it. If yep. it was made in a plant, don't, don't eat, eat it. it. Yes, 100%. You know? for so sure. it's, it's important to eat real food. And if you eat real food, you're probably never going to have a problem. But I will say this, so Terry Walls um, had um, MS, okay. and she's a doctor. She was in a, um, like a tilt recline wheelchair. She was just wasting away, and her life was over. She couldn't practice medicine, and she just said, I'm not giving into this, and she developed the Walls Protocol, uh -huh. and um, the reason I'm mentioning it is because there is nutrition there that she, she went to the most like highly nutritious diet you could have. Right. I mean, she's doing nine cups of leafy green vegetables a day. It's like a big, and, it was like a yes, whole container. Yes, <laughs> and she talks about all the types of vegetables and things that you should be eating and meat mm -hmm. because there are there are minerals, vitamins and minerals yeah. in, in the, those animals. So I don't I don't I don't say to anybody don't eat meat. You should only be a vegan. In fact, I think that um, if you don't know how to supplement your diet, you probably shouldn't be a vegan because yeah. you're not getting, you may well, be B12 deficient. Protein deficient other, a lot. I'll, I'll, yes, a lot, you need to know how Iron to deficiencies in some of these. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one thing too, yeah. like when you look at, if you were to look at all the nutrition research out there, you're gonna find a, a lot of different stuff, but the vast majority of people who have the success are people who eat nutrient-dense foods yes. that are real foods, yeah. and they have a, a good balance of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, because right. they're all super important, but it's nutrient-dense stuff, and it's sustainable that people like. like that When you look at the plethora of the research, the people who have the success are who find something that works, where they eat healthy, whole foods yes. in good amounts, Right. And it's that, and it, it's that. That's what's sustainable and works. It is, and 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 also mood. Because I was listening to your other oh, podcast, the, I, I and you were talking about the up. vagus yes. nerve and the brain. And the gut, the gut brain connection is so strong, Crazy. and we we know that there's that there's this connection. And if your gut microbiome isn't healthy, and you're not getting enough of yeah. the right types of foods you know you need probiotics and you need prebiotics yes. you need fiber yes because um the the um i think they're the the names it's a husband and wife the sonnenbergs okay and they do um they've done a ton of research on the gut microbiome and they talk about how if you lack fiber and and sadly in the american diet and i'm sure other uh, westernized um you know cultures we are lacking fiber it, it you know it's horrible yeah, and so because we lack fiber what happens is those gut microbes are starting to um, look they're scavenging yep. and they're destroying the mucus lining this yep. is all according to the Sonnenberg's research that these gut microbes are scavenging your mucus lining see I'm making a little, yeah, I like little it. scavenging I'll, motion that's, that's, no that's, that's, that's very scientific yes, if you look <laughs> under the microscope <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Yeah, they are. They're going like that. <laughs> They're scavenging. And then that's where you get the, you know, what is commonly called leaky gut. Yes. Because there's actually now a perforation because your gut, you're supposed to have these really nice tight junctions. Right. And now the junctions are opening. And that's when bacteria and things that would normally never escape your gut right. are traveling. And, you know, I, I also heard too that. Um, the good bacteria, one of their jobs is to try to combat some of the bad bacteria that, that, that gets into our system too. Yes. And when the good bacteria aren't healthy enough because they don't have their food and they're scavenging and they're not producing the byproducts they need to produce it enables some of that the nasty stuff. 
yes. to take over, take and then they start. They uh, colonize. Yeah, they colonize into a biofilm. Bad and stuff. And yes. then when they start, um, you know, their their uh, their byproducts from what they do to live, this starts as toxin, and it to get into the bloodstream, yep. triggers the inflammation. Yes. Right, we're already stressed out with more inflammation, so it's like this yeah. crazy and brain inflammation, cycle, brain inflammation, so hundred percent. Yeah, and you're getting, and then, and then if we can tie in yeah. the sleep thing, so yeah, whoever's 100%. listening, you know, if you think you can get by on five or six hours of sleep, you're really doing yourself a disservice. And, right. Um, it's really important. There, there are sleep hygiene is really important. You've heard that. There's tons of. Yep, I made a video about it. A couple you of made videos. yes, you yep. did, and and um, also I would refer you to Lennon's video, but also to uh, Matthew Walker, who's a sleep scientist. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna check him who out. Who has some of the absolute best podcasts on um, sleep science. It's crazy. We don't even the experts don't know a ton about sleep. I mean, right. they're they're still like trying to figure. But but he you know he pre provides some. So, so I want to. I'm going to give you my um, yeah. secret. See, I have my secret uh, sleep uh, protocol. So um, I've been playing around because I t tend to be hypervigilant at night. I I, want, I I I know that I want to go to sleep, but I'm I often I can s fall asleep, but I wake up in the middle of the night. Right. So um, here's what I take, and I and I just say to um, anybody watching this that. Before you take anything, check with your doctor or your pharmacist. Of don't, course, don't, obviously, don't, no, 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 no. Don't take my advice. Just, I'm just telling you what works for me. So I have, with a lot of research, and I've tried so many different things. Right. I've come up with um, magnesium. Okay. Okay, which is a big one. Everybody knows magnesium relaxes you. I do magnesium glycinate. Okay. Um, and I do six milligrams, three to six milligrams of melatonin. Okay and L-theanine. Really? L-theanine, it is, so I was reading about it, athletes who the night before they go to compete, they don't wanna feel hungover or drugged, so they're not gonna sleep, take sleeping medicine, and they're not gonna take like Benadryl or something like that. So what they do is they do L-theanine, which quiets your mind. Okay. It just quiets the noise in your mind. So the combination of the magnesium, the L-theanine, I take 200 milligrams of L-theanine, but again, everybody's different and then I take the uh, melatonin. And that combination, about an hour to an hour and a half before bed, helps me relax and sleep better. I sleep more deeply and I'm getting my sleep under control. That's awesome, that's really, really important yeah. to find what works for you or the individual. Interestingly enough, for me, so I have epilepsy, I have a really mild form of it. The only yeah. time I ever have an issue is if I don't sleep and in the morning. So I used to have this really bad sleep anxiety. Yeah. You know, where it's like, oh my God, I, I'm not gonna fall asleep. I can't function the next day, yada, yada, yada. So I would rely on sleep aids very, yes. very often for a long time. And if I didn't take one, I would have so much anxiety that I wouldn't be able to sleep that I wouldn't sleep, you know? Right. Just within the last probably four or five months when I really got into my meditation practice and some of these other things I've been doing to learn how to be still and calm and then also eating significantly healthier, yes. I have slept with no sleep aids at all soundly as I've ever slept, I'm dreaming, which I haven't been dreaming in a long time. So it's very interesting to work on sleep hygiene habits that benefit you. And if you can get a routine, your body will get used to it and, and it'll yes. be good. Yes. And so. And your circadian rhythm. That's huge. Which is amazing. So if, if, you're, um, if you're a circadian rhythm person, you may want to look at Sachin Panda's work. Um, Dr. Rhonda Patrick interviewed him and it is one of the best podcasts. He, she did two podcasts with him and they're both so informative. So if you're a geeky, sciencey person and you want to understand circadian rhythm, definitely check out those podcasts. But, okay. you know, he talks about how important it is to get up with the sun and yes. go to bed when it's dark or at least dim the lights in your house. So you don't want to be sitting under one of these bright lights um, and sitting at a computer screen, you know, before bed. Uh, it, it's Or even checking your phone because even if you put it on night shift, I'm it still it, not sure that that red light no, is, it's, it, it's still, your brain is still stimulated yeah. because you're, you're, you're reading your text you're reading messages and your videos emails. and you're, yeah, yeah. you're yeah. not home, you're not right. calm, you're so, very, and so then you get circadian misalignment okay. and that's, that it can really screw you up and that starts a whole, then you have weight gain and, and it, it, it all ties into how your body uses insulin because your pancreas has melatonin receptors. Yep. So when you, when you, when it's nighttime and you should be going to bed, your pancreas is expecting, you know, the melatonin. And what does your pancreas produce? 
insulin. Yep. So you're, if you're eating a meal, I mean, we'll go back to the nutrition thing. If you're eating a meal at 11 o'clock at night or you're snacking on cookies and chocolate so Yeah, refined milk, carbohydrates, right. which are normally those kind of, kind of meals we're eating late at night. Let's keep it real, right? It's sweets and oh, chips anything. and things like that. You're not, you shouldn't even actually be eating at night because what you've done is you've just created some, you're, you're contributing to circadian misalignment and you're pushing your sleep time further out so that the melatonin will not kick in. Mm -hmm. If you eat a meal, your body ramps up because it's it's it has just another, triggered your circadian rhythm to go, it's time to get up. Yeah. Instead of... It, you're also giving it another job too, where it has to, it's gonna be stimulated yes. or it has to do stuff. Yes. You know, and yes. I agree. Like I, I, I used to be someone who would eat at night. Like mm -hmm. now, dinner's my last meal, typically right around six or seven. You know, that's usually when I eat my first meal. I try to get. Uh, I don't. I don't know about it. I guess it's a fast, technically, but it's just from dinner that I have breakfast is, is my next meal, typically. You know. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Do you yeah. do a twelve hour, at least twelve hours? Yeah. So, so, you know, I mean, I'm not like rigid about it. I'm not like it has to be twelve hours all the time. But mm -hmm. I don't eat a lot of desserts and things like that anymore. So dinner's vast majority of the time my last meal yeah, um, yeah and then you know breakfast is my first meal something usually very healthy but at the same time I'm also someone who who believes that like you can be healthy and nutritious without being crazy right. about rigid it. like you know what if you want to have dessert one night a week or something do it yeah you can be healthy still I'm, you know? I'm into freedom Friday. yeah you know so I, I I'm not I, I fully know a based on myself and than all the people I've worked with and then all the science I've studied that, you know, the people who are the healthiest typically aren't this like crazy on it like all the time. That people enjoy life and understand that, you know what, if you want to go out for like a dinner with friends and family and drink some, some wine and, you know, have an appetizer dinner and even a dessert, right. you know, if that's your every day, we're in trouble. Right. If it's one day, it's never about one day or one meal. It's never. It's right. never about that one day or the one meal, right? right? It's, right. it's not about the one serving of fried chicken you right. ate when you went out with your friends. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, th that's one thing I'm trying to tell people too. This time we have a lot of parties and a lot of holidays, right? I mean, every religion, culture, something is having, right. having you know, events. Event. events. And you know, there's certain things that we can definitely do to try to, you know, make them a little bit healthier. And I think that those are, are, are some of the things where it's just like, limit the amount necessarily of, or don't make it about the food, I, I guess, you know? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, don't don't be so crazy where you can't enjoy yourself and it's stressing you out because you want more potatoes or something, you know? And finding that balance of, of enjoying yourself, but still having a, you know, a nutrition, following your nutrition plan is, right. is, is very is very interesting. What, what do you think also, about? When you say, sorry, what, wouldn't you no. also say that like, um, having friends who are supportive of you so yes. that they're not handing you Coke yes. or handing you, you know, ice cream and saying, you got to have this when they know that you're trying to lose weight, yep. you know, have, or in my case, hand me the, hand, 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 me, hand me the ice cream, hand me it. And, which, um, you know, that brings up yeah, another point, know. which don't need to get into, but healthy bulking or healthy gaining weight's hard. Yeah, it's, it's hard so to hard. eat a ton of oh, enough calories healthily, right? When you're eating so plants hard. and it's, it, it, you I know what's it, you. what's interesting is when people think fitness more often than not it comes into even my mind weight loss I mean that is right. ninety percent of the people we have want to lose weight and stop hurting right right, Those, right. that that every now and then though you get people who need to gain weight yeah. and it's You're looking at it's it. a right. lot harder I would say it's harder to gain weight healthily yes. than to lose weight honestly right. you know to put on real good strong weight so I it's true yes. and so I've been struggling with that so lately because I was horrified when I went to the doctor and he looked and he and he weighed me and check, checked me out and he you know and so I said okay so I, I made in my mind up that I'm going to do because uh, I like to know what's in my cookies and in my cakes and in right. that stuff because I don't I really don't want to have trans fats and I really don't want to have high fructose corn syrup right. because we all know what that does to you um, and so I started making like peanut butter oatmeal cookies and Which I've tried I've tried all these wonderful you know, little snacks you've brought in. Yeah, so I know what's in it. It's good stuff and it's high calorie. Yes. You know, nut butters are really good high calorie yep. things and they're still in the healthy I mean you 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 could get crazy and drive yourself crazy with too many omega sixes, but 
you know what, I need the calories, so yeah. I'm eating all this stuff with oats and things, and, and, it's, and it's all good, you know? And I, I think a lot of it goes down, you can tell when you feel good and when you don't, like yes. energetically, foggy, you know, good gut, irritability, like any of those things, like you can tell if you're feeling yep. strong or not strong, or however you want to look at that. And for me, I can really tell the difference when I'm uh, following a nutrition plan well, Yes. And when I am not on it as well, you know, right. um, I feel a huge, huge difference. But the friends are, you, oh, who you surround huge, yourself with, and your, and your mentors and yep. your coaches, yep. that's huge. going to People can either you. suck you down or they can lift you up, right. you know, and it can go both ways and find those people who are going to lift you up. Yes. And a lot of times it's less is more with, with people because, you know, a lot, a lot of people, you know, they're, they're down to drink the Coca-Cola and have 10 beers or whatever it is. Yes. I'm not trying to just pass judgment, but find the people who will uplift you and add some, something to your life. Because it's hard enough as it is, you know, and yes. you don't, for, your, for each individual without having somebody who sort of has habits that are not well, in line with your, what you value and with what the direction you're headed, you know, your if growth. A, 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 a crack addict shouldn't be hanging around crack addicts and drug dealers. Right. If they want to not do crack anymore. Right. You know? I mean, well let's, keep, said. let's keep it real. Yeah. Um, all right. We're going to wrap this up here for time purposes. But real quick, I want you to say three things. Uh -oh. I know I didn't tell you this. I, I like to put people on the spot. It's fun. Uh, your your top spot. three okay. piece of advice to get people to um, how to nourish their bodies, minds, and souls. Top, okay. top, top three. Okay. Um, meditate. Okay. Exercise. Okay. And eat food. This is Poland. I'm going back to Poland. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. I love it. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the uh, the Life Cast. We're talking about nourishment here with our guest Sarah Arbus. Um, we appreciate you all. Any last words? I do. I have Go one ahead. last yes. thing. Yes. I would make it four things, and the last one is laughter. Love it. Put, surround yourself. Put yourself in a community where you're socializing, where you have laughter, where you have fun, because that is so much a part of wellness. So it's, yeah. it's, it's great if you're exercising and you're eating well and you're sleeping and breathing and meditating, but if you're not laughing- and enjoying it. And enjoying. And what, what, what's crazy about smiling, laughing, and enjoying, like the physiology of like what it does, the chemicals it releases in your body are yes. really, really good for you also. Yes. So in, in addition to it being fun and you're enjoying it, like inside, it's doing a lot of really good stuff too that I don't think a lot of people realize. Just yeah. the smile itself yeah, does changes stuff. your chemistry, yep. your, your hormones. It releases yes. your happy stuff. Yes. All right, guys, thanks again. This is LifeCast. We're out of here. Much love.